LGBT support is falling for the first time since 2015. And guess what, ladies, gentlemen, and everything in between? It's our own fault. One day I was just like, I'm trans. And so you were born as? A female. As a female, and now you're a man. Yes. I believe that trans men can get pregnant. I'm trying to get pregnant right now, and I'm a trans man, so yes. And male terms being used for me felt like me. And and I think people like this person I personally am putting children in harm's way by dressing up in a wig, by wearing a heel are part of the reason for it while they think that they're being funny by trying to be scary towards people or trying to intimidate people I personally am here to do so much harm, so much harm Thank to you. you. Thank you for admitting the world. it. Or trying to threaten people into thinking that they're putting LGBTQ in harm's way. This is specifically targeting queer people. It's using it against us rather than to support community safety. These people forget that they do way more to hurt the LGBTQ community. I, as a gay person, only want the worst for people, hello. Than they do to actually help. And when it comes to people like me, they will say that we're the ones that are dangerous, that we're the ones that are self-hating, that we're the ones that are trying to get in the way of progress. And it's really quite the opposite because at least people like me are willing to acknowledge that some things have gone a bit too far and we're trying to find the middle ground with not only other LGBT, but also with society at large. And that is more helpful than this person Person trying to make a young lady feel scared which this girl I'm not familiar with her page I'm starting to check it out now but I do like the way she handles herself thank you and the way that she doesn't get shaken your words not mine dude and I'm sure that if I were to go through her stuff I would not agree with every idea and every thought that she has but at the same time I would say that she comes a little closer to hitting the mark for me than the people that she's interviewing I just like to feel comfortable in my skin and especially this guy that's trying to I don't know what also you have to remember that when you're offering to take a woman around the corner to show her something do you want to see where I personally give people um, take out people's uteruses do you want to see where I personally take yes out people's I do want to see that oh okay good because I actually do it right around the back alley if you, if you want to see, yeah, we can go. Want to go check it out? And I do think that it's easy for someone to take that and be like, look at this scary gay man trying to bully this young girl right now. And that too will reflect poorly on the rest of us. Also, when there was that pride celebration where they were chanting, we're queer, we're here, we're coming for your children. <laughs> And then they said that it was a joke. Well, a lot of people took that seriously and that really did take over the internet. So you're serving as bad PR for your own community and a community you claim to love. There was also the protest somewhere in another country where they were barking like dogs. <laughs> That's something that happened and made us look bad. So when you constantly make people afraid of us, I don't know how you expect anything but a negative result to come from that. And if we don't at some point step in and correct our own and say, this is not making us look good and this is not going to get us the result we want, it will be on us because we're the ones that didn't step in. We're the ones that didn't speak out. We're the ones that didn't help out our own cause. And the other thing I think that people people in the LGBTQ plus community need to remember is that in a lot of cases, other countries do look to us. I know that there are other places that are a little bit further in their LGBTQ relations, but at the same time, we have to acknowledge that the United States is quite a bit of a trendsetter. So a lot of countries do look to us to see how it is we're able to navigate it. And the way that it's working out with LGBTQ kind of trying to take everything over over, it doesn't look the best and it doesn't serve as a good model to look to other countries and say, well, look at what great results we're having with it. Why wouldn't you try it? It's very clear why they wouldn't try it because looking at us and the way things have gotten out of hand might scare them. So now I'm going to read the article and you guys can let me know what you think and where you're at on it and we can go from there. <laughs> 
What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Tyra Berry here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Before we get started, I'm just gonna ask that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you wanna comment just to help me on the algorithm but don't know what to comment, just leave a knife because the sensitive LGBTQ is gonna come from my neck on this one. Anyway, like I was saying, support is down since 2015 and it is all our fault. And I'm including myself by saying our, but really it's their fault. It's the stuff you're seeing on TikTok. It's the stuff I'm regularly addressing on this channel. I'm gonna go ahead and read through this article. The article I picked was from The Guardian. I'm gonna interrupt myself as I'm reading it just to interject. But it really has come to a point where people don't wanna support LGBTQ right now because even when you're LGBTQ, most of us don't wanna support it at this point because it's turned into a thing where this isn't what we signed on for. You're trying to make it seem like there's not supposed to ever be a line at which straight society or even other LGBTQ can say we don't agree with this. If we try to disagree with something, we're branded as self-hating, it's branded as hate speech, it's branded as not wanting to accept that trans people exist, and we're saying no. We're not going to live under that kind of emotional blackmail. You go ahead and sell that somewhere else because the rest of us want to be able to discuss ideas and whether or not we agree with things case by case. Case. Not an entire blanket where we have to either 100% accept LGBT or not accept LGBT and be considered hateful. Because most of us are not at all hateful towards LGBTQ. I will admit that when I was growing up, we didn't have any gay people. We had adults that had roommates in one bedroom apartments that we couldn't figure out why, since they both had good jobs, they lived in one bedroom apartments, but we just accepted that for what it was. And they just lived their lives in the closet. And if you're not careful, that's what you guys are gonna roll us back to. And I'm gonna be honest, it wouldn't 100% bother me because at this point I am comfortable just being what I am and not having to include the entire world in it. I don't need the entire world to affirm me because in the gay community or the LGBTQ community, we've gone from wanting tolerance to acceptance to encouragement. And acceptance was a bridge too far because it's one thing to say, tolerate us, let us live, let us do do our thing. That to me is completely acceptable. Acceptance, nobody owes you acceptance. Straight people don't get acceptance. If you're too fat, too ugly, too skinny, you're not going to get full acceptance. So why should the LGBTQ be guaranteed acceptance just because they're LGBTQ? And then you go even further and you're like, I want encouragement, which is what it's come down to. Well, the rest of the world isn't always going to, yes, queen you. Not all of us even live in that space. I'm not a constant cheerleader for almost anybody. There's a few friends that I'm very supportive of and even them I'm supportive in a very realistic way. So let me read this article and I'll tell you where I think things are going wrong. Public support for same-sex marriage and non-discrimination protections for LGBTQ plus Americans has fallen even as the overall share remains high according to new findings by the nonpartisan Public Religion Research Institute. Broad majorities of Americans regardless of political party or faith continue to support LGBTQ plus rights and protections, the analysis found. But after years of rising public support, the decline is notable, said Melissa Deckman, CEO of PRRI. The survey analyzed Americans' attitudes towards LGBTQ plus rights across three policies, same-sex marriage, non-discrimination protections, and religion-based service refusals. It found support for all three measures had softened for the first time since the PRRI began to tracking views of the issues nearly a decade ago. While the vast majority of Americans continue to endorse protections for LGBTQ plus Americans, Degman said the results may serve as a warning sign for those working to safeguard the rights of LGBTQ plus Americans amid a conservative legislation and legal effort to erode them. There was an expectation over the past few years that support for LGBTQ plus rights was gradually growing stronger among all sectors of American society and in fact up until last year, our own American Values Atlas found that support was gradually rising, if not staying steady across a number of indicators, she said. This is really the first time we've seen a decline in support. And just like I said, of course there's going to be a decline in support because over the last couple of years, it's gotten more and more crazy. Over the last couple of years is when we've had to deal with trans women now being in women's sports. That's also when people started really pushing LGBTQ youth transitioning 
medically, also drag queen story hour, also kids at drag shows, also some people wanting to be able to teach kids about orientation and trans and non-binary. And eventually, Americans just decided to put their collective feet down and say, all right, that's enough. This is where we bow out. This is where we give you a hard no. According to its findings, support for same-sex marriage slipped from 69% mm, of Americans in 2022 to 67% in 2023. Now, I have a theory on this. For a lot of people, once gay marriage started happening, that's when we started down that slippery slope. So while for some people it was like, yeah, we want gay people to be able to get married. We want gay people to have the same rights as the rest of us. Then there was always the argument that once that happens, what's gonna be the next line? What's gonna be the next frontier? Some people thought it was going to be animals or that's the thing they used to say and we used to be like, oh, you're being ridiculous. We just want to get married and that's all it is. And then it did turn more and more extreme. And yeah, nobody's pushing for animals just yet, but I wouldn't put it past the way that some of these people are behaving. I love collars, so I wear those. So, well, you can say that's not really a thing. At the same time, we are getting more and more extreme and there are many LGBTQ people that are similar to me that are just starting to get like, I guess if it's between being with the people that really just want to say everything's okay and there should be no rules and there should be no gatekeeping and there should be no lines and the people that are more conservative then I guess we're going to go a little more conservative because as I said before this was not the plan going in. Support for policies that protect LGBTQ Americans from discrimination in employment, housing, and public discrimination fell from 80% in 2022 to 76% in 2023. Again, Again, when we're talking about public discrimination, public discrimination would also include bathroom laws, I'm sure. I'm sure that's also when we're talking about trans in sports. I'm sure that's also when we're talking about doctors saying that they will not prescribe cross-sex hormones for minors. I'm sure all that falls under public discrimination. So you're lucky it's only a 4% drop. Like this article just said in the beginning, it's not dire yet and the changes are slight, but it is letting you know that this is your warning to either correct the course or things are gonna really start rolling back, which I'm guessing that because LGBT doesn't wanna accept any response responsibility at all and say that maybe some of this is going too far and maybe we should compromise. I think things are only going to get worse and before long there's going to be no public support for anything LGBT and it's very unfortunate because a lot of us did fight a long time to just live like everybody else and that's going to be taken away. Opposition to allowing businesses to refuse services to LGBTQ plus Americans on religious grounds dropped from 65% of Americans in in 2022 to 60% in 2023. Well, I think that's because more and more people started to actually see what that looks like in actual play. And not everybody wants to be forced to use pronouns they've never heard of or plural pronouns for singular people. And I know the LGBT is always arguing, well, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to just be a she, a her, or a he and a him. So it can't be really easy on one side and then really hard on the other. Also, so with that comes the term cisgender, which straight people have already let you know, they don't want to go by the term cisgender, but the LGBTQ activists are still pushing cisgender. No matter if you're not gay or you're straight or cis. So enjoy the pushback because it's not working out. The analysis also identified a strong correlation between those who adhere to Christian nationalism, a once fringe belief that the U.S. was founded as a Christian nation and its laws should reflect Christian values and opposition to policies protecting LGBTQ plus rights. You know, that's something I've noticed even with my own circle, a lot more people have become more religious. And with that does come accepting the fact that our country was founded on Christianity. And I know we've always talked about a separation between church and state. And there's a part of me that really does believe in that separation. But then there's also the realist in me that knows that once people start to look at things a particular way, it's kind of hard to get them off it. So even though you may not want this country to be run by Christian values, some people are going to start citing the fact that we are a Christian nation. In God we trust is on our money. And you can argue that any way you want to, but 
it is what it is and it's an actual thing. The changes were largely driven by a shift in conservative attitudes towards LGBTQ plus protections. Slightly fewer Republicans said they favored laws protecting LGBTQ plus Americans from discrimination in 2023 than did in 2015. Despite rising support in the intervening years, the decline was especially notable between 2022 when two in three Republicans backed such protections and 2023 when the share dropped to roughly six in 10. Americans overwhelmingly agree same-sex couples should have the legal right to marry, a majority that has grown notably stronger since 2014 when the PRRI began tracking the issue. But in 2023, support for the constitutional right declined among Republicans, down to 47% from 49% in 2022. There was also a 2% decrease among independent voters from 73% in 2022 to 71% a year later. See, even independent. So while the LGBT community loves to blame the right and loves to blame Republicans, why is it even independents are starting to wane on their support for the LGBTQ community? Could it be because the LGBT activists have become a little too pushy and a little too forceful and backed people into a corner and made people feel like it's either stand up and say something now or let this country just go completely out of control. Most people are starting to stand up now. And again, you have yourselves to blame. The findings based on interviews with more than 22,000 adults conducted by the PRRI throughout 2023 as part of its American Values Atlas come amid a worrying legal and political landscape for the LGBTQ plus community. Public support for LGBTQ plus rights soared following the Supreme Court's 2015 ruling that established a constitutional right to same-sex marriage. In response, social conservatives have orchestrated a well-funded backlash to the expansion of rights for LGBTQ plus Americans, waging an aggressive campaign against the trans community as a way to rally the Republican base. Okay, I don't really like the way this article is painting it because when you try to make it seem like this is all backlash from Republicans and conservatives, that might be the most organized faction that's actually coming out against this and that might be where quite a bit of the funding is coming from but there are a lot of people in general that have just started to give up on this idea I am a gay man and I have gotten tired of having to constantly coddle the LGBTQ plus community there does come a point where you're just like enough is enough I'm not your parent I don't have to support and encourage everything you do it's just not the way the world works the survey Degman said reminds us that you can't necessarily expect support for hard-fought rights from some Americans to continue going up in perpetuity. Nor can you expect that even when a strong majority of Americans support your views, that that's enough to protect the legal rights of LGBTQ plus Americans. The Supreme Court last year ruled that a Colorado web designer had the right under the First Amendment to refuse to design wedding websites for same-sex couples despite a state law forbidding discrimination against gay people. The dissenting liberal justices warned the conservative majority's decision was a license to discriminate. I covered that story in one of my videos and there really wasn't a lot of public outcry because it was a situation where it's like, yeah, if that's not the way my mind is geared, I shouldn't necessarily have to do that and you shouldn't be able to force me to do it. In the high court's consequential 2022 decision overturning Roe versus Wade, conservative justice Clarence Thomas suggested at reconsider Lawrence versus Texas, the 2003 case that invalidated sodomy laws across the country, and Obergefell versus Hodges, the 2015 case that established the rights for same-sex couples to marry. At the state level, Republican-led legislators have enacted a sweeping array of new laws banning gender-affirming care for transgender youth, exactly like I said, when you're trying to lump that in as a discrimination against LGBT people, not even LGBT people have your backs on that in a lot of cases so I don't know why we're trying to blame anybody outside of the community and not just looking into that the way that we should when it comes to protecting kids especially as much as we all claim to love LGBT youth and as much as we say that we want them to live healthy happy and productive lives I don't know why we keep trying to push this but let's go ahead and in some cases adults as well as placing new controls on gender expression in schools from the pronoun students use to the sports teams they play on, the books they can read, and the bathrooms they are allowed to use. All the stuff I just mentioned earlier. Understand that people do not 
not want to go along with all of this. That's not discrimination. That's people just being like, this is probably a little further than we want to go. And it's not necessarily what we consider to be LGBT rights. Nobody has the right to play a sport against people that are not of their same sex. And when we're talking about biological sex, you can argue whatever you want about gender, but biological sex does determine a lot of things. And there are a lot of factors that make it not only an uneven playing field, but in some cases dangerous for women to play against biological males. Several states have also moved to restrict drag performances. And when they say that, they leave out the fact that in most cases, they mean restrict drag performances for kids, for minors, for youth. As part of its analysis, the PRRI survey also offered a detailed portrait on LGBTQ plus Americans. According to the findings, more than one in 10 Americans identified as part of the LGBTQ plus community in 2023, including 22% of Americans under the age of 30. Among LGBTQ plus Americans, 45% identify as bisexual, 34% identify as gay or lesbian, 21% something else. I guess the something else would probably be pansexual or demisexual or one of the others that is now a part of the community and 2% as transgender or non-binary. When it comes to that trans number, if 2% are identifying as transgender, that should tell you how much what's calling itself the trans community should be open to understanding the way that other people think because if you're only 2% of the 10%, that lets you know how minuscule that group is when it comes to voting and when it comes to actually being able to assert any kind of political muscle the way that they think they're going to. And even when we're talking about in-person protest, those can easily be drowned out once the general public decides to jump in and say, you know what? If they're going to march in the streets, then we're going to march in the streets. And one day it is going to come to that. People are going to get tired of listening to people with no point shouting in the street and they're going to be like, okay, let's go out and shout in the streets in counter to this and let them see exactly how loud we are and what our numbers are compared to them. And once you lose that last bit of political correctness that society has, where they've tried to make us believe that we have to just agree with everything that any LGBT person or LGBT activist tells us we have to agree with. And once we're actually all able to express ourselves the way that we want, want to and as openly as we want to, then you're really going to start to run into some problems because you're going to see how little of a group you have, how little the support you have is, and what it is the majority is actually trying to, at that point, not ask you, but tell you that we're going to do and tell you that we're going to submit to. More than half of LGBTQ plus Americans are religiously unaffiliated, while more than a third identify with the Christian faith. Nearly six in 10 LGBTQ plus Americans consider themselves politically liberal. Six in 10. So that's just over half that are still liberal, but that number is beginning to change dramatically. And I guarantee you guys that in upcoming years, it's going to change even more. So maybe you guys can let me know down below in the comments what you think the reason for declining LGBTQ support is. I've already listed what I think the reasons are, and I've already told you guys where I think that it's going. Feel free to express yourselves. Thank you for watching. Until the next one, this has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world.